Okay, so this is Deuteronomy chapter 28, part 6. Remember, they're changing my voice. So I was discussing how Deuteronomy flat out says, just like, I want to say it's Zechariah, but certainly also in Isaiah 13, it says that women are going to be raped and children are going to be abused. They're going to be spiritually dashed to pieces. It's going to be raped by deception. All marriages are going to be invalid. You're, it, that's what it says right here in Deuteronomy 28, that your marriages are invalid. You'll be pledged to a woman, right? God wanted you to marry one woman, but you end up with another. And before long, it's so confused and there's so much illegitimacy that there's no chance of a valid marriage and that will occur. Um, the line will be drawn after my flesh dies definitively. Your ox will be slaughtered before your eyes, but you will eat none of it. Your donkey will be forcibly, takeably, forcibly taken from you and you will and will not be returned. Excuse me. Your sheep will be given to your enemies and no one will rescue them. Your sons and daughters will be given to another nation and you will wear out your eyes watching for them day after day, powerless to lift a hand. A people that you do not know will eat what your land and labor produce and you will have nothing but cruel oppression all of your days. The sights you see will drive you mad and it will drive you mad every generation. It says if you don't obey God's commands, there's going to come a time when the time is up. And that has to do with logic and wisdom. After my flesh dies, is anyone logically worthy to lead? No, not even close. So when that's what Deuteronomy and Leviticus, that's like what the whole Bible is saying. It's saying scramble to do the right thing. John the Baptist, Christ, they're saying the axe is already at the root of the trees. They say time is short. It says before you know it, the kingdom of heaven will be upon you and the end will be near. And it's a formula that they're discussing of how to come to these conclusions. Okay, a formula of how to know when the end is there. And it has to do with principle, it has to do with logic and reason. The people who wrote this consider themselves wise men and they consider the masses of people idiots. They consider them fools. That's why they say it's a mark of the beast. A beast is a dumb life form. Okay. Let's turn the page here. Now verse 34. The sights you see will drive you mad. The Lord will afflict your knees and legs with painful boils that cannot be cured, spreading from the sole of your feet to the top of your head. The Lord will drive you and the king you set over you to a nation unknown to your ancestors. There they will worship other gods, god of wood and stone. So what are they talking about? It's like gods of computers, right? You know, Elon Musk and, and Tesla. It's like, you know, gods of politics, right? That they don't know these people. Did the Native Americans know the settlers? No, some of the settlers were black people. They didn't know who these people were. They came from far away. When people mix and make another race, which is how another people is formed, will they know them? No. Is it saying don't mix? It's saying if you're gonna mix and if you're gonna have babies with anybody, you do it in a certain spirit, the spirit of moral precision. And we know who lives a morally precise life because it's obvious. We know the system doesn't allow government workers to live a morally precise life because it's wrong to work for the system. What good can you do working inside of a system that has so many checks and balances, which has such pet petty orders? We know and we can go group by group why would you limit yourself to being a jock with no higher cause, a gangster with no higher cause, okay, an emo, a goth, a rocker, a rap fan, anything without a higher cause? If you don't have a higher cause, then you worship something other than God. No matter what scriptures are being read by who, no matter how they're interpreting it, it makes it clear in Isaiah 28, 17, to make righteousness and justice the measuring line and plume line. Righteousness and faithfulness are the belt and the sash around the top martial artist's waist is what it says in Isaiah.